All right, I guess we can get started. Thanks so much for coming. Welcome to WordCamp. Um, happy to have you guys here. Especially excited to be talking about contact forms because I am never allowed to talk about contact forms in public because I do mostly marketing stuff. And I am crazy about contact forms. I feel very passionately about them. And you may also, and you maybe just don't know it. So let's get started talking about contact forms and how to optimize them. Essentially, what we're going to talk about today is how to make your forms serve your business. So if you have a website, you should have a contact form. And if you have a contact form, you should make sure that contact form is working well for you. Come on. All right, so to get started, my name is Kimberly Daggerhart, and I am a freelance professional marketing person. So that's the business stuff. Um, fun stuff, though, I collaborate with NASA on projects from time to time, and I do social media work for them. I'm also a member of the 2016 South by Southwest Programming Committee. And the last little icon there on the left stands for the Hunger Games, which I was an extra in. <laughs> so there's a bunch of weird stuff about me. Hopefully that will make you remember who I am. You can find me at my website, Kimberly.co, or on Twitter, at KM Daggerheart. I primarily tweet about space. So if you really love space, feel free to follow me. I'll be tweeting about WordCamp as well. Well, what we're going to cover today, we'll start with why contact forms matter. And hopefully I'll make the case really well for that, and everybody here will walk away thinking contact forms are very, very important. And then we'll look at five ways to optimize your contact form, simple things you could do today to make your contact form better. Then I'll talk briefly about contact form plugins, and then we'll have a Q&A session. All right, why contact forms matter? And this will be illustrated by real tweets from frustrated people. Tweet number one. And by the way, I removed the company names from these tweets because I don't want to publicly shame anybody. But here's somebody tweeting at a specific company. Tried to contact you through the site, but contact us form not working. Waited 15 minutes on the phone with no help. Don't want my money on the new site? Yikes. So contact forms impact user experience. This is really important to keep in mind because people are coming to your website for a variety of reasons. They may be trying to get in contact with you for a sales thing, for something they've already purchased, for all kinds of opportunities, and your contact form needs to work correctly. Tweet number two. Hey, email provided? Why even have a website if you're not going to have any contact information at all, especially if you're a business? You should have contact information, and this shows us that contact forms also impact sales, which is the sad pig. Tweet number three. Hello, trying to reach you for a magazine feature, but contact form not working. Wow, that's a huge missed opportunity, right? Especially because journalists work on deadlines, and if they don't have a chance to get in contact with you in that time, that window of time, that they have to work on their piece, you're not going to be featured. And by the way, this happens more than you think. Just two weeks ago, somebody contacted me through my website contact form for a magazine feature. And it was because they saw me tweeting about Pluto. <laughs> so that was cool. It was confusing to me at first because I thought, why doesn't that journalist just contact me through Twitter if they obviously saw me tweeting about it? Um, but she had a really long pitch, and she wanted to explain her article, so she needed more characters than 140. So contact forms impact user experience and sales and media opportunities. Go back one more. And more. There are lots of other opportunities that are out there that your contact form, if it's not working correctly, means you are missing out on lots of opportunities. So that brings me to this. A contact form is an important aspect of any successful online presence. Done and done, final word, bottom line, you need a contact form and it needs to work well. So now we'll talk about five ways to optimize your contact form. And again, these are things you can do today. Some of them are a little more technical than others. But at the very least, if you know what words to say to the programmer or developer you're working with, then they should be able to help you out. 
All right, test your contact form. Test it. You must always test it. And testing it one time is not good enough. You need to test it more than one time. You perhaps need to test it kind of often. So here's another frustrated person's tweet. Our site's contact form has been down since December 26th. Just noticed, uh, if you've messaged us, please try again. What? Who do they expect is going to send another message? Like the one, probably the two people who are following them on Twitter who have sent a contact form submission to them are even going to see this tweet. That is a really bad thing to have to do. And we are now in July. This is a tweet from July. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there you go. That can also happen if you don't test your contact form, if you don't know what's going on with it. You could miss six or seven months of leads, sales leads, media opportunities, customer service inquiries, all kinds of things. So here's how to test your contact form. First thing you do, you fill it out and you submit your own form. I know that seems incredibly elementary and basic. But these are the questions you have to ask. Is my contact form working? And not just the functionality of it. So if when somebody has submitted their contact form and when you're testing your own, if you get that confirmation message, you know it's been sent through, it doesn't end there. What you also need to do from there is see where that submission went. I've worked with clients before and they had previous employees' email addresses and email accounts, and that's where the contact form submission went, and nobody checks that email account anymore. So you should check it and make sure that you know exactly where your contact form submissions are going. Along those same lines, is it going into the spam folder? Because that happens too, even with completely legitimate contact form submissions. For whatever reason, sometimes they still end up in spam. So check your spam folder. The other thing is having a backup. So this previous company, if they had had a backup, either a backup email address for the contact form submissions, or if they were using a plugin that had a database backup, like for example, Jetpack, their contact form allows you to keep a database of all the contact form submissions, then they would be able to retrieve these. However, it sounds like they didn't, and so they lost six months of leads. And you don't want to be that person. And lastly, you want to check to see if it works on mobile devices. And if you have multiple devices that you can use to check, I recommend that. So if you know, you're in an office where people have an iPhone and they have an Android and maybe there's a Windows phone, who knows what it is. But checking them on multiple devices is a really, really good idea. Make sure it works for all of the devices that you can. So here's the bottom line piece of information about this. Test your contact form, test it often, and then test it again. If you haven't tested your contact form in the last couple of months, you should do it. Because it's amazing how many things can break your contact form. I know, because I've broken lots of contact forms. <laughs> um, I used to work for a website company, and we would do redesigns and launches, and part of my job was to check the contact forms uh, before we launched. And then usually two weeks after launch, I would also go back and check. And Sometimes the client would add a plugin that interfered with our contact form plugin without telling us, or they would hit the update um, for the latest WordPress version, and that would break a contact form. Or their employee who was getting sent the contact forms would leave the company. There's so many ways your contact form can go very, very wrong, um, which is how I think about when I submit a contact form to a company and I don't hear back from them, I'm just thinking about all the things that could have gone wrong and I try not to hold it against them, but not everybody's going to be so gracious. All right, second thing, use helpful form design. Now this isn't a design talk, I'm not a designer, but we can all understand and realize what is helpful form design and what is not. So for example, Clearly indicating required fields. You can do that in a number of ways. You can do it through text, like seen here, required. An asterisk is a very popular way to indicate that a field is required. You can also do it with color and other design elements. 
it's important to tell people what fields are required and which ones are not. There's nothing more frustrating than thinking I have filled out all the, the fields in a, a contact form only to have an error message and not understand that I was required to fill out every field, you know? So, along the same lines, clearly indicate errors. If you have a contact form or any form on your site and there's, you know, for example, 20 fields that somebody's got to fill out, and then at the end of that, they click submit, but it says error, and you don't identify which field is the error, you're going to lose that person unless they're very dedicated and very committed to submitting information to you. Make it easy. Say exactly where the error is occurring so they can fix it quickly and get on with their day. And finally, mobile-friendly design. It's important for contact forms to not only work on mobile, but to also be accessible on mobile via thumbs. What you want is proper spacing between your fields and a large button. You want your colors to indicate what the user is supposed to do next. So again, test on mobile. See how easy it is. Do they have to you know, scroll left and right to see all of the fields? Or are all of the fields stacked on top of each other so they just have to do one scrolling motion? Does that make sense? So improving the experience improves communication and conversion. And in this scenario, what I'm talking about when I say conversion is contact form submission. So if you want people to contact you and feel like you are available and helpful and care about them, and you're opening yourself you know, up for opportunities, spend time with just these few elements, just three things, mobile-friendly design, indicating the errors, and telling us which fields are required. All right, this is my favorite part. Simple, relevant form fields. I'm sure that we've all encountered contact forms that ask us for things like our home country, our pet's first name, our mother's maiden name, et cetera. There is this idea, I think, in the sales world that the more information you can gather, the better. Just hands down, flat, like that is it. However, that's not true in the world of contact forms. So three to five fields are going to be what produce the best conversion rate. And according to a HubSpot study, using just three form fields guaranteed a 25% conversion rate. And that's awesome. That is a great conversion rate. And so here's an example of a contact form with three fields. What else do you actually need to know? person's name, email, message. On my personal contact form, I only require an email address. So you can either tell me your name or not, or you can send a message or not. I don't know why anybody would just send me their email address, but that's fine if that's, if that's what they want to do. So to show you the power of using fewer contact form fields, we're going to take a look at a case study from Expedia.com. So Expedia was testing how their different form fields affected conversion and ultimately sales. And here's how they started. This says company name, and that's the field that they removed for this test. As you can see, it's not even required. So why did they even ask that? Who knows? But so company name, they decided to remove it, um, and they did a test. And the results were incredibly startling. $12 million could be directly attributed to removing a non-required form field titled company. That's kind of incredible, right? So, because I often have to talk to clients who want to get into this discussion of, well, we need their address, we need their phone number, we need at least two email addresses, we need for them to make an account, etc. Here is a really great study to show anybody who wants to argue with you about how many form fields you should have. Reducing form fields and focusing only on what is relevant to that customer, to that potential client, in that moment, will help with conversion. And as Expedia shows, also can help you make money. Lots and lots of money. So here's the thing about phone numbers. Um, people don't like to give them out. Nobody wants to be hassled on the phone with a marketing call. And because of that, 
If you require a phone number for your contact form, you will reduce the number of conversions. One study by Kick Quick Sprout said that conversion rates doubled when a phone number was listed as an optional field rather than a required one. So if you're currently requiring phone numbers on your contact form, make it not required, if at all possible. And sometimes it's a difficult battle to wage, and I understand that. Um, people really like getting all the information right there, right up front. But here's the thing. I would, what I often try to do is to challenge the sales team, because usually it's the sales team, um, I try to challenge them to come up with ways that they can collect that data further on in the sales process. So rather than getting you know, somebody's life history right up front, let them talk to us for a while before we get their whole life history and make that part of the sales process rather than part of the marketing and lead capture process. So asking for as little information as possible is a really solid strategy. Anything you can do to get your contact form fields down to that three to five Goldilocks zone, good thing. Good stuff. Now for my second favorite part of the presentation. <laughs> Let go of the CAPTCHA. What's a CAPTCHA, you say? Oh, we've seen them. You've seen them. You've seen them everywhere. This one says former nerd, so it's one of the funnier ones that I've seen, uh, which I really like. So a CAPTCHA is an anti-spam measure that looks something like this. But it also looks like this. And this is a huge screen, and I know I'm wearing glasses and I don't have great eyesight, but what is this? My God, that, I have no idea what even language that's in. That is crazy to ask me to, you know, this is an insurmountable obstacle for any human just to contact you. Like, I know nobody wants Viagra emails, but my God, come on, that is crazy. So essentially, what I would like to ask you to do is to let go of the CAPTCHA. Now, this may be concerning in some ways, but we'll get to how you can let go of the CAPTCHA and still not get spam. Here's another tweet. Your contact form's not working, and the spam detector is in another language, which I cannot decipher. It's in my question. I found hundreds of tweets about CAPTCHA-related frustration in the last month. So it's not just me. Your CAPTCHA, if you use a CAPTCHA, it will actually reduce conversions. A Moz study found that it makes conversion rates decline by 3.2%. And maybe that's not a huge deal. However, I have had clients before where one contact form submission could equal a $100,000 contract. So telling them that they could improve their conversion rate by 3.2% made an amazing business case. And they went with it because it makes sense. So what do you do? What about all the spam? Well, technology moves very quickly, and we are now in a place where we can have spam-protected, capture-free forms. Raise your hand if you knew that. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, this was a really exciting development for me, somebody who loves contact forms but really hates CAPTCHAs. So what you do instead of using a CAPTCHA, at the end of the presentation, I will show you which plugins have the feature of capture free that are still spam protected. And so you can make your decision. So, CAPTCHAs reduce conversion. And Something you'll have to balance as a website owner and a business owner is security and usability. So it's a decision that you'll have to make. But I would err on the side of no CAPTCHA. I would so much rather deal with a little bit of spam than make it impossible for people to ever contact me. Bless me. And finally, provide confirmation. Now this one's important because I think that there's definitely a perception of, you know, when I submit a contact form to a company, it kind of goes into a black hole. Nobody ever responds. I don't know what's happened. I have no idea if anybody's ever seen the thing that I've submitted. And it would be really easy to take care of this if the company just provided me with some confirmation. 
which is really easy to do. Here's another frustrated tweet. Ah, attempted to make contact with at company via online form, but it didn't seem to send. So they either got six duplicate emails or none at all. <laughs> Who's ever done that? Who's ever submitted a contact form and you just had no idea? Right, right. So you, it's really easy to make this a better experience by providing confirmation. And there are lots of ways to do it. One way is just to say with a message that pops up after form submission, your message has been sent. That's one way to do it. Another way is to confirm with a thank you page. Thank you pages are really fantastic because they give you an opportunity also to have some marketing stuff going on that page, which of course I love as a marketing person. But something I really like about this page specifically is that it says we'll respond to your request shortly. I would prefer something a little more specific saying in the next 48 hours and one business day, et cetera. But that's way more than most people give you to even say that they'll respond to you. Um, and then in the world of analytics, if you have a thank you page that is shown upon a uh, contact form submission, then you can also con uh, track your goals that way too, which is really fantastic. And here's another one that I really, really like. This um, only, this really became apparent to me that this was a great way to do business and to have your contact form set up when I was planning for my wedding because I was contacting lots and lots of vendors and submitting lots of things to their contact form and the people who sent me a copy of, their, of my own contact form submission with the link to their website, those were the people I went with because I contacted like 15 people a day. And the only people that I could really keep top of mind were, of course, the people who responded, but also I had this record of the people I had contacted, so that was really fantastic. So these are the three ways to confirm. You can do it with a message, and lots of contact form plugins allow you to have a message that you can customize. You can do it with a thank you page and confirm with an email. At this point, I don't care which one you use, but it would be really great if everybody would agree to confirm that when a contact form has been submitted on their site, they display some kind of confirmation message and let the user know. So confirming successful contact form submissions helps to avoid confusion and frustrated tweets. If you don't want frustrated tweets, let's go with having a confirmation. All right, so now we're going to review the five ways to optimize your contact form. The first thing, test your form. By the way, if at any time you want to look down at your computer and test out your form right now, I'm totally fine with that. Um, whenever you can find a moment. Have a helpful design, so let users know what's required, what's not required, and make sure that it works well on a mobile device. Simple, relevant form fields. If you can whittle those form fields down to three to five form fields, that would be great um, and would help increase your own conversion rate. Let go of the CAPTCHA and provide confirmation. Anybody have questions about those before we move on to contact form plugins and their features? Yes. Yeah, it says confirmation of successful contact form submission helps to avoid confusion and provides additional marketing opportunities. Yes. You know, I always find it comforting myself. Um, one of the links that I have at the end of the presentation is to this incredibly exhaustive study that was co-produced with Google, and they have about 41 things to do to make a great contact form. Um, and that may be one of the things that's mentioned there. But I, I, I like it when companies will say, we don't like spam either, we're not going to send you spam. Other questions? No, I don't. Yeah. I, the more confirmation I can get, the better. <laughs> and plus, go ahead. Separate question. What's your opinion about having an email address on the website? 
Well, again, I, I think a lot of the time people don't want to have an email address because they don't want to get spam. Um, there are ways around that as well. And I think it is better user and customer experience if you give people a way to contact you. Are you going to go over how ways for that? For the email address? Um, I can talk about it briefly. What I've seen people do, and maybe um, some other people in the audience have different ideas, is they'll write something like, so for example, for me, I would put hello, the word, and then a space, and then I would put the word at, and then I would put domain.com. <laughs> so it couldn't be read by a spam bot, but people could still understand that that's how to contact me. Yes? Well, that's yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of the thing. There's almost no way to know if you haven't been tracking your contact form submissions and you don't have a backup, unless that person is very kind and helpful and reaches out to you in another way. Like, hopefully, you have another way to be contacted somewhere. Um, but yeah, I've encountered that more than one time with people who are like, okay, well, what can I do to recover those? If you don't have a database set up you know, with your plugin and you don't have a backup email address, and nothing. You can't do anything. That sucks. That's terrible. Um, so yeah, I don't know of any other ways to recover, which is why having this stuff in place before something goes wrong is really the best way, it's just to avoid it to begin with. Other questions? Yes? Yes. Oftentimes, all you have to do is actually add just a comma to uh, between the email addresses, and having a backup is, is a very, very good idea. Other questions? All right, let's keep going. Contact form plugins. Now, I have to give you lots of caveats on this, because right now, there are more than 1,000 contact form related plugins that are available for WordPress. And I do not have enough time to review all of those with you today. Um, hopefully, what I've done instead is show you kind of the criteria or what you should be looking for in a plugin. And there are lots of plugins that fit the bill. There are lots of really great plugins out there. And so I'm going to take you through four different contact form plugins that I like and I think are pretty rad. Um, and I'll, I have all the information that you'll need to find out more things about them. Uh, so Contact Form 7 is the plugin that I've used the longest. It is very um, malleable. You can do lots of fun stuff with it. It's not exactly the prettiest contact form, but it's very flexible. So this does feature a database uh, of submissions, so you can keep track of that. You have to have an add-on called Flamingo um, to make that work correctly. You can do an autoresponder email. And you can either do CAPTCHA or you can use a Kismet to not have to use CAPTCHA but still be spam protected. It provides a confirmation message that you can customize. It provides error messages that show the user where their field needs to be updated. And it's free, which I love. And once I post this uh, slideshow online, you'll be able to click on these links to get more information. Does anybody here use Contact Form 7? All right. And what do you guys like about it? And or why do you use it? I used it and created like a little baby survey for a client. We wanted to know uh, what people were interested in when they came to the site. So, you know, we just put a, uh, we didn't, I didn't know about that mail to respond to it. Basically, they would arrive, fill out the, a specific contact seven form, and then get submission. We would get, you know, the email that told, answered the question, and they would get sent to another page. Right. I think you kind of page where they could download the free thing that was Exactly, yeah. The Thank You page provides so many marketing opportunities, like being able to download, um, you know, a PDF or an ebook, et cetera. Do you have a reason why you use Contact Form 7? For free, it's extremely flexible. Yeah. Um, it's really powerful for what it is. It's been around a while. It's been 
embedded and tested and it's been around forever. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, do you have a reason why uh, you use Contact Form 7? Absolutely. Yes? Yeah, and that's very general criteria. Every company and every business and every project is probably going to need something a little bit different. But this is kind of like the lowest bar that a contact form plugin has to pass before I will use it. So I will see a redirect to a page number. Is that not So, um, yes, that is included in the confirmation message. Contact form 7 does allow you to redirect to another page. All right, moving along to Jetpack. Um, I just recently started testing out Jetpack's contact form feature. And as I was testing my own contact form in preparation for this class, I realized I had mistyped my own email address into the recipient box. <laughs> um, so there's another mistake to look out for. But so far, so good. I like Jetpack. Um, it has some nice features. It's very, very simple. It's not as customizable. But I think for a lot of people, this will be just fine. And it has the database of submissions that you can access from inside your WordPress dashboard. And it's under a tab called Feedback, if you haven't seen that before. And it uses a Kismet, so you don't have to use CAPTCHA, which is great. There is a confirmation message. Um, and it's free. Again, totally free. Not nearly as flexible as Contact Form 7. But if you're looking for something simple that does look good and still looks good on mobile, Jetpack is the thing. So the Jetpack contact form feature is very good. Does anybody here use the Jetpack contact form? Ah, yeah, that one too? <laughs> yeah, I've used lots of them as well. Um, this one's good. I think for the average person, that is a totally fine contact form to be using. Ninja forms. Does anybody here use Ninja forms? Yes. Um, so Ninja Forms is, again, incredibly customizable. They're very beautiful. You can put together just really, really lovely looking forms if you're into that kind of thing, which I am. And you've got the autoresponder. You've got a database of submissions. You can do CAPTCHA or not. Confirmation message. You've got your error messages. And the core plugin is free. The add-ons will cost extra. What do you like about Ninja Forms, Stephen? Well, uh, as a developer, Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really beautiful, well-functioning forms. I like their forms very much. I don't like that I might have to pay for the stuff that I want. <laughs> but it, it's worth it in the right situation. Formidable, um, again, it meets all my criteria. It has a database of submissions. It lets you have an autoresponder. You could do a CAPTCHA or not. There's a confirmation message. They have great error messages. And it's free for a basic version. But if you want advanced versions that will cost money, you can visit Formidable if you want to take a look at those. There are lots and lots of other forms. Um, one of the ones I hear about often, heard about it a lot yesterday, Gravity Forms. Does anybody here use that one? Ah, and what do you guys like about that? Can you grab it based on the person's submissions, skip logic, and uh, multiple data? But also, uh, for non-sophisticated users on mobile, it's easy for them to attach photos from their phone oh. on Apple and Android. And send that for the message. Yeah, and that's actually something that's not available for, uh, for all contact form plugins. It's difficult to find a plugin um, for WordPress that will allow people to upload images and make that simple. So that's awesome that Gravity Forms does that. This is for field installers. So yeah, that's awesome. 
gravity forms. It is worth mentioning that gravity forms is a paid plus. Yes. Uh, but it's pretty awesome. This is pretty fantastic. Does anybody else have something fun to say about gravity forms? If you're trying to do some really complex things, gravity forms is really great. If you're trying to integrate it with some other service and you're just doing something really wacky, uh, it can probably do it. It has a really cool credit card, uh, or, or pretty, pretty easy credit card integration. If right. You're using a third party credit card processing service uh, built in security kind of thing. It can be kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember either. What's that? What's the cost of it? I think the single site is like, it's either 39 or 69 dollars a year. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, here. But uh, another thing is, if, if anybody in here has a product that they sell, Yeah, lots of great ways to use these different forms. I mean, so even though we're focusing on contact forms specifically today, this applies to all forms. This applies to your checkout process. This applies to you know, surveys that you're doing. You can use all of these same tips to make all of those elements of your website more effective. All right. And now I will open the floor for any other questions. And if we have a little bit of time, I think it would be worthwhile um, if you have a contact form to test it. And if you want to talk about it, I'm happy to talk about it with you. If you want your neighbor to test your contact form, um, I think that would be a fun exercise as well. If you guys want to go test my contact form, it should be working, but I make no promises. <laughs> like how embarrassing, right? My contact form was not working two days ago because I mistyped my own email address, which is my name. Come on. So it can happen to anybody. Um, it happens all the time. It's fine. And if you would like to reach out to me, definitely feel free to do that. And here on the last slide are sources. <laughs> I put the Twitter search for contact form not working. So if you guys want to see just a live stream of all the people frustrated with all the contact forms out there, um, I think it's really funny. <laughs> and then there's the quick sprout study that I mentioned earlier. Um, the Moz study. This one right here, usable web forms study. This is a huge study that was done in conjunction with Google. And like I was mentioning before, there, it's incredible the amount of information that has been collected. And their tips are really fantastic. Um, I didn't want to do more than five because that's kind of overwhelming. But they have lots just page after page after page. If you want to go really, really deep, real deep dive into contact forms, usable web form study is the place for you. And then I also um, use some information from the website UX Movement. All right. Any other questions? Anybody want to talk about contact forms? <laughs> Thanks, by the way. Thanks for coming. We offered a free trial for a design service, and uh, it was going to require a couple of hours of time to see submissions. So to qualify people, we deliberately made a contact form link serious people would fill it out. So I forget how many fields on it, but I think it was two dozen. And we got pretty qualified ladies to work out. So go in the other direction sometimes. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, there is a, like a, a certain amount of information that you have to have most of the time for these sales leads to qualify people. Um, and that's totally understandable. I think if that's the thing that works for your business, that's completely fine. As long as all those fields are thought through and you're not asking for, you know, something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that tactic work well. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Yes. Yes. What well, we found any good ways to fix that? We we usually switch to sending emails by SMTP to fix it. Do you have any solutions? 
Yeah. Um, this is one of those things I almost included in the presentation because it comes up a lot, but it also is kind of technical and it's going to depend so much on what that person is using and then, uh, you know, what, where they're hosting their website and there are just all these additional things. If you want to come to the happiness bar, I'll be there from 115 to um, 2.45, I think, and we'll be happy to talk about that one-on-one -on -one, because it does get a little more technical. Anything else? Yes. Right. And there are even, oh man, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was telling me about a plugin that he came across recently that will, so if somebody's filling out your contact form but they don't make it to the submit button, it will still send all the information that was put into the field, which I have ethical concerns about, um, but maybe over time it'll be fine and I, it'll just be what we do. But there are ways to get information that people aren't even giving you, which is interesting. Um, good question as to whether or not that's okay. I guess if your privacy policy very clearly details that you may just be taking information from people, whether or not they decide to send it to you, then maybe that's fine. Um, but I thought that was really fascinating that we are at a place where technology can just grab whatever they're writing into your form fields and keep it. Interesting stuff. Has anybody seen that? Has, yeah? I haven't had experience with it yet. It's, Kind of crazy. Sites where if you quit in the middle, you go back, repopulates the fields. So it's essentially doing the same thing whether or not it's sent it to whatever. Yeah. So they really must do that with cookies or something. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of similar to um, if you've ever put something into your shopping cart when you were shopping online, and then you get an email later that says, hey, did you forget something? An abandoned cart email. So it's kind of the same concept which I'm totally fine with an abandoned cart email, but just thinking about contact forms that I maybe decide not to submit, still get sent to that person anyway, just kind of freaks me out a little bit. You know, it's kind of difficult to deal with thinking about that. Other questions or comments? Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this may be a happiness, happiness bar question, but I'll ask it. Um, so I have a client Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble that in Google Analytics. The forum say to put this little code in addition to settings, but it's not working for some reason. Do you have any experience? Yes, I do. And that is definitely a happiness bar question. Yeah. Um, but essentially, the Contact Form 7 is incredibly flexible and super awesome, and I love it. Um, but you have to do everything exactly correct. You know, there, there, it's an unforgiving syntax and every piece has to be set up perfectly um, or it won't work. And then sometimes it has nothing to do with Contact Form 7 as to why other stuff doesn't work. It could be another plugin that's interfering with it. Yeah, it could be any number of things. Um, so yeah, let's talk about that. I'll be at the Happiness Bar starting at 1.15. Other, yes. Ah, another really good question. Okay. That is the first thing I do, usually. Um, yeah. It can be very confusing. Um, how I approach Googling for tech support is I will sort 
in the Google results by time, and I'll look for answers from, so if an update happened that week on WordPress, I will look for answers from the last week, because I'm not the only person that has this problem, if, you know, if it's related to the update. And then if I can't find the answer that way, um, I will uninstall the plugin and reinstall the plugin. I'll start there and go through the process again. But of course, before doing that, you will want to back up the database of contact form submissions if that's something that's important. Other questions or comments? Yeah, and also, if you have contact form questions beyond WordCamp, feel free to contact me. I really like helping out with contact forms. Um, I'm trying, I think of myself as trying to improve the world one functional, beautiful contact form at a time. So, I would love to help you with that. That would be fun for me. Um, and they're just so important. They should be working properly. And if you're working with a developer, and a designer, and maybe you're doing like a website refresh, et cetera, make sure they understand how important your contact form is to you. They should have it set up and working well. And they should be able to tell you, you know, where those contact form submissions are going, if there's a database, if there's spam, um, anti-spam measures in place, et cetera. Other questions or comments? All right, guys, well, thanks so much. Um, come join me at the Happiness Bar. If you'd like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be there starting at 1.15. And I hope you have a great rest of WordCamp. But I'm sure I'll see you guys around. Thanks, guys.